Welcome to the inaugural live stream of Being Disciples Live. It's always good to learn something new, so this is going to be in conjunction with the uh, Being Disciples podcast on Podbean. It's uh, going to be an interactive show, hopefully, as it grows as time goes on. Uh, what will really make things is having conversation with people, answering questions, having a conversation. Uh, for the most part, tonight's an introductory, kind of go through things, how, how they're going to go, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So tonight, we're going to start with a news and updates, take a look, then commentary, a scripture thought, and then some uh, question and some answers. I have a lot of questions. I do not have all the answers. So let's just start right there and be up front there. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at uh, news and updates. And uh, having just gotten started with this, there are not a lot of news items, but kind of an introduction. The first five slides here are going to be the same as what's up in the upper right corner. Uh, those will be playing throughout the show. And basically, the slideshow here, if you want to contact me, there's a, the email address. Uh, our local ecclesia, if you're in the Anoka area, in Minnesota, we have a prayer gathering on Monday nights. We have what we call Pizza Man Church on the first and third Thursdays. This originally was when we were witnessing to people on the streets doing street ministry, we would invite them into lunch and we had that every Thursday. Uh, since COVID and things kind of changed, over the last few years and, and street ministry has kind of waned a little bit. Now we use it as a gathering for fellowship and encouraging one another. Then we have fire pit worship on Thursday nights. And this is just gathering around the fire pit, playing worship music, having some conversation, getting involved in each other's lives, uh, worshiping God, interacting, uh, a one-on-one -on -one connection with, with God and, and see what uh, we hear from him. Occasionally, we pray for one another. It's just basically general ecclesia. And then for the ecclesia at Anoka, if you're moved to support me at all, I thank you for your obedience. But, you know, you ask God what to do. If, if uh, he says don't give, don't give. If he asks you to give 50 cents, give 50 cents, whatever that may be. So recent video projects right now, both on the uh, podcast and other areas, I'm doing a series called Out of Laodicea. And we've done four episodes so far. Part one is the journey. What is Laodicea? Laodicea is a place of deception. Uh, it was an actual city. So in part two, we took a look at the city and discussed what the city was about, uh, compared it to the letter in Revelation uh, chapter three and showed how the uh, hot and cold and lukewarm and all that stuff was actually a metaphor for what was going on in the city in those days. And then in part three, we did the same for Ephesus, took a look at that letter. Because the, the message I got was lead my people out of Laodicea into Ephesians. So we're not talking about the actual cities of Laodicea and Ephesus from that point of view. But to have that background is, is really what I was after there. Laodicea being a place, <clears throat> excuse me, a place of deception leading into the book of Ephesians, which is really a, a handbook for living the Christian life. And then part four last week was Ephesians overview. It was just overview of who wrote the book, who it was written to, uh, the things in the book, some of the themes, some of the topics. And then coming up, we're going to lead into now a verse by verse study. So in the future weeks on the podcast here, we will be able to discuss some of those specifics in that book. And then I also want to show you um, on our, on our website here, let me get to the right page over here. We have a website called Virtual Study With Us. It's actually virtualstudywith.us. And in this website, you can learn a little bit about us. My friend Garrett, who was going to be a moderator tonight, 
ended up ill and in the hospital, so our prayers were with him tonight. And you can learn a little bit about me. And then uh, if you wish to send a gift, and the invitation here takes you into the gospel message. This page also has the topics that we've studied in the past. So you can go through here. These are different series. The wall, our identity in Christ. Now this is a big one. We need to learn who we are in Christ if we expect to do the work of the kingdom. And what is our destiny? This was a whole series on destiny. And then a series on the Trinity and final destination, kingdom of heaven, God's love story, which we need to start, and then different parables. So there's quite a bit in there. Now, I mentioned the Being Disciples podcast. We have a link here. The podcast page, let's go to that quickly. The Being Disciples podcast is at beingdisciples.podbean.com. And on this page, you can get all the episodes. And it's from the newest to the oldest. So it starts with the part four Ephesians overview, which I said we just copied. But you can scroll back here to the beginning and start with part one if you'd like to. So previous studies of authority and armor, Christ in the seven letters, a 10 part series on, on disciples, what it is to be a disciple of Christ. So there's a lot of stuff there, but if you would like to see things in a different order, by clicking on this up here for, uh, get my marker up here this will help show you where I'm at so up here click on the being disciples podcast and from there you can scroll down and see every episode from first to last from the introduction episode one that was back in uh, April of 2022 and then when you get to the bottom of the page here you can see you can click on the next page to go to the next series so these are all laid out with a little bit of a description. And if there happens to be a video, you can click on the video marker here. And if there are notes, you can click on the notes here. And a lot of time these notes go back into those studies that we were doing. So let's just click on one there. So here's the virtual study notes for molding disciples or molding stones. It's part six of the discipleship study. So you can see the whiteboard, which is where I always began my study at just making notes. And pretty soon I had enough information there. I put together a presentation and it just walks you through the notes in an order that you can follow and study along. You can follow along with the podcast or you can use these notes for your own study. Use these notes to, to lead your group. If you have a home study, a home group, an ecclesia of your own, uh, Use the stuff for whatever you want to do. Copy it, print it, use it. It's there to be used. The other thing here is if you're not familiar with the term ecclesia, I have a section on ecclesia here. And you just click on that. Begin your study here. And then this is the message from Laodicea to Ephesians. And that was done a couple of years ago in our local ecclesia. We had what we called Sunday sessions. And we got together on Sundays and... I presented these things and that's really the roots of where the podcast began and and where this website began and so the Lord gave me this message a number of years ago it's been refined so what I'm presenting now is a little bit different than what's on that website but as far as the Ecclesia if you go click this begin your study here exploration and you can see there's there's a few parts here what is it and it happens to be governmental and then a deeper look so you can get into that and then bible verses a whole list of bible verses that uh equate to the ecclesia and then i have also some different resources there's a few good books here on ecclesia that i got listed and then a couple of websites one of which is omegakingdomministry.org or it's actually okmtraining.org I should go change that. OKMtraining.org is the site. And that is all about promoting Ecclesia and the gospel of the kingdom. So those are the websites we have. Okay. So back to our agenda here. Next thing is take a look. 
And so we'll move on to that one. <laughs> okay, take a look. So this is just a, a little overhead camera I have here. And for things like when we're doing a study, sometimes I like to, to dig out a book. Um, for example, this one had all the, the maps. So when we began talking about Laodicea, we could show how all the, the map is laid out. It starts with Ephesus. And this is actually the order that it goes in the book of Revelation. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So everything is laid out in that order. But I have this camera set up so that when, when we want to do things like that, if we're talking about things or I want to zoom in on a, on a verse in my Bible for you to look at, we have that available. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at the commentary. So this section is really just something for me to express what's on my mind, whatever the Lord's been dealing with me about. So here you can see the topic is active ecclesia. So on the active ecclesia, we're not meant to be passive. We're meant to be out there doing something. If you read in Ephesians about being given the apostle and prophet and evangelist and pastor and teacher, it says that those are given to us to train us up to do the ministry of the kingdom. Well, that is an active thing, to do the ministry of the kingdom. And what is that? Well, first of all, it begins with, with the love, the commandments to love God with your whole being and then love one another. So we have to first start with that. And that's part of what we exercise in these other functions at our local ecclesia, the prayer gathering, the fire pit worship, the... Uh, uh, pizza man church <coughs> excuse me so we're just uh, loving on one another getting involved in each other's lives we support one another as we need it whether that be financial emotional prayer time uh, we've had some deaths over the last few years just being there for the person letting them know that you care all these things are part of being an act of ecclesia but if you go back and do the study and you learn that it is a governmental function of the kingdom of God, then you need to be out there fighting against the evil. He established that ecclesia and he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is not gonna be able to withstand the activity of the believers if they gather together. And he said, where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst. So with just two or three of us out there doing spiritual warfare, praying over problem spots in our city, uh, smoothing out the rough edges, some things are just going to happen. But but there's some things that are actually demonically inspired and, and spiritually a battle out there. We are to go out and do the battle, but we have to learn how to do that. And that's what part of the podcast I do, Being Disciples on Podbean, that trains up people in how to do those things. It talks about what what is it really to be discipled? We don't see that too much in our churches today. A lot of it's bring, bring someone to church, let them learn about Christ. But there's no real training up of people of how to go out and be an active ecclesia. In fact, in most churches, you've probably not even heard the word ecclesia, except maybe when it's misused, making just thinking it's just a small group of believers. But really, it is a term that comes from the Greek. And it began with the Greeks, and probably before that, but with the Greeks. And then the Romans did it too. What they did was they put a group of their people in each town once they took over that territory and taught them how Greece did things or how Rome did things. And so their goal was is that if somebody was traveling through the cities of, of the Roman Empire, they would feel at home basically they'd be able to communicate because things were done basically the same way so when god says to go out and and do the work of the kingdom he wants us to establish those like things so if i'm traveling to indiana for example i'd stop and visit russ and 
The ecclesia there would be like-minded as the ecclesia I lead here. Or anywhere in the country I go, anywhere in the world, if there's an ecclesia set up, we're of like mind, we're battling evil, coming against the evil of the day. So that's basically what the commentary will be like. I'll, I'll have an idea, have a thought, and then we'll go through it. So then the next one here is a scripture thought. And so this is really going to be a, a short program on my part. I plan for this to be like no more than a half hour. But the real key is, is that if people are joining in and people are asking questions or having conversations in the chat, that's where it really comes in handy. And even to some point, maybe getting people live on the show with me and able to really expand things and have conversations where we're really working things out together. So the next one up here is a scripture thought. And for today, I'm still learning to toggle all my buttons and, and do things on my own here. So forgive me if uh, I seem to be a little skittish, but we're learning, we're learning. It's, it's been a fun time so far. So my Bible thought of the day has been John 14, 6. And that verse specifically says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I picked this one for today because it's actually my favorite verse in the Bible. Because there's no wiggle room. Jesus talks about the way to the Father, the way to eternal life. There is no way except through him. But what is this thing about the way? Originally, before believers were called Christians, they were referred to as people of the way. They were following Jesus Christ in the way that he taught them to live, the way that we ought to be living. So let's take a look at those verses beforehand. In starting in 14, 1, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And that what I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will again come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Now Thomas asked the question. This is why Jesus answers it with that verse 6. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So another thing about this, knowing him and knowing the Father, it's one thing to know about Jesus. It's one thing to know about God. But he's saying, if you had known me, you would know him. Do we know Jesus? Do we know him on a personal level? I grew up in a church and a religion where I learned a lot about God. I learned to honor God. I learned about reverence for God. I learned a lot of things about God. I was never introduced to him on a personal level. It was never shared with me in that religion that there is a personal relationship that is necessary to be spiritually born again, to be made alive. As Jesus explains in other passages, you know, that, that our spirit is brought to life when we surrender to him. And he shows the way. He says, I am the way. He is the word of God made flesh, the son of the living God. Not created, but part of God from the very beginning. And he came to lead us on the way to eternal life. So he is the way in the word of God. And he is the way in leading by example on how we ought to live. He is the way in that he went to the cross for us. That he paid the penalty that we owed for our sinfulness. He was gracious to take that sin upon himself to be made sin for us. That if we trust in him for that, that he has taken our penalty for that, then we are free to become children of God. We are free to live life without the burden and the guilt and the shame of that sin. But how do we do that? Well, he leads the way. He explains it. He lived it on earth for many years. 
and especially the three years of his uh, ministry, he, he showed the other disciples how to live. And then they went on and showed us, and from generation to generation. Now, some of it over all these generations seems to have gotten watered down, and that's why we have the problem of Laodicea, all the deception going on. So part of the goal here is to get back on track, to figure out what the gospel of the kingdom really is, to come out of Laodicea and that deception, and to begin living our lives in reality, how the book of Ephesians teaches us, and that is loving one another, loving God first with our whole being and loving one another. And then we no longer need to strive in the do's and don'ts of religion. Religion is really the enemy of the kingdom of God. We need to get things clear in our mind, have our mind renewed, as the Bible says, and start seeing things from a, from a, a godly perspective, from a, a kingdom perspective, and turn away from the ways of the world, which is all going to pass away. The ways of this world are full of sinfulness and, and self-absorbing uh, hedonistic practices that, that just seek pleasure and really leave nothing but pain and destruction in its wake. And I think we're seeing that now as, as the, the evils of this world are really being revealed, really being brought forth. And so the goal here is, is to draw near to God. How do we develop an intimate relationship with Almighty God? And how do we walk with Him to, to follow the way? So, back to the agenda here. And this is where questions and answers and conversation would come in handy as, as we build an audience over the coming months. But now we have the questions and some answers. Okay, I'm not going to profess to know all the answers. So I titled this questions and not all the answers. Now, if we had people in the chat, I would see the questions. But we have people all the time during our, our ministry asking questions. So today we had a little Zoom call with a half dozen people on it. Uh, I do that on behalf of Omega Kingdom Ministry, which again is at okmtraining.org. And if you want to go there to, to learn more about Ecclesia Ken or at virtualstudywith.us and look at that study that I have there. But the questions that come up are interesting and sometimes they make us think. And one of them today was about, is it is it against Christianity, against our beliefs to, to sell a dog? And, and it was a new one to me. I'd never heard of it. But when we uh, looked it up back in Deuteronomy, there is a, a term that uh, talks about prostitution and male prostitutes in the temple and that they were referred to as dogs and not to, not to be giving your money to that uh, immoral sexual lifestyle. So we learned something today. It was, it was kind of fun to dig into something I really didn't know the answer to. So we just did it live. And I'd be willing to do those same things here in this presentation, in this broadcast, if that's the way things go. So as far as that goes, we've completed what's on my agenda. And, uh, you know, it's 9.23. So just this introduc introduction was about 23 minutes. And that's really all I plan to take each time is, is hit, hit some things quickly, uh, get in a half hour at the most, and then move on to whoever is here, whatever questions. Uh, we'll build an audience over time and, and hopefully get a, a nice little group here that, that uh, we can get to know one another and have these conversations and figure things out. So until next time then, be the blessing to others. Have a great Thanksgiving. Give thanks for all things. All things, all good things are a gift from God coming down from the Father of love. And so with that, I bid you adieu and have a great weekend.